So I was diagnosed with, uh, with autoimmune thyroiditis. Um, I was overactive and then underactive. And so sort of went on this hormonal roller coaster where I felt like I was going through puberty and menopause at the same time. Over the next couple of years, it devolved into chronic fatigue syndrome and dysautonomia, which is a complete dysfunction of the branch of the nervous system that controls um, largely subconscious but vital bodily functions, right? Like blood pressure, heart rate, digestion. At my lowest, I was um, housebound for two years and then largely housebound for like really the greater part of a decade. And that's where I, as a doctor, began to, I saw the limitations of the paradigm I had trained in and had to go outside and start asking new questions and looking for um, more fundamental questions about what makes us sick and what makes us well. I bought and printed out Master Gu's um, textbook on wisdom, healing, qigong, and just devoured that thing. There's so much incredible, rich information, and I've read it so many times now. It's just completely marked up. So the concepts became much deeper, and the philosophies and the the energetic sort of how do you sensitize yourself to the subtle energies around you. And I began actually practicing, and um, it really became the foundation of my healing. And so what happened was my healing went just kind of like that. I mean, it was really inexplicable. Her health issues really began after our first daughter was born. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so uh, this this was pretty immediate from 2005, you know, on. Uh, so it was, there was never a time when the children were young that I remember her feeling just solid in her health and it was with us the entire the entire time. The, the sense of any kind of normalcy was completely, um, completely just, you know, pulled out from, from under me and I would say probably from under us as a couple. I think it's one thing when you have a broken leg and you know what it is, you know what the recovery time is, you know what to expect, you know how other people with the same uh, injury have, have recovered. Uh, in this case, we didn't have any of that. There was no roadmap. And so on top of the, the stress and sadness uh, of her not feeling well, there was this additional stress of really not feeling like we had our hands around what was going on. And Cynthia is an incredible doctor. She's the doctor you know, at work that other doctors come to when they can't figure out a problem. She's very, very good at diagnosing things. And, you know, this was a mystery to her as well. And so it was really, uh, and I felt, I felt helpless. And then, you know, not knowing where this was going to go. She was eating all the right foods and doing all this research. And really, there was nothing that she was doing that was contributing to her ill health that I could see. And she was really being like the best patient that, uh, one could be, and this stuff was still happening, so it felt very unfair. I remember that my dad was taking care of us a lot because my mom couldn't like get out of bed. You're home, you're alone, you know, you can't go out with your friends, you you know, can't do your normal activities, and and, and it's scary, right? You, you don't know. At my lowest, I was um, housebound for two years, and then largely housebound for like really the greater part of a decade. And that's where I, as a doctor, began to, I saw the limitations of the paradigm I had trained in and had to go outside and start asking new questions and looking for more fundamental questions about what makes us sick and what makes us well. There was no way I was going to even be able to tolerate drugs. I just knew it. It forced me into, uh, into looking elsewhere. Bob Levine was my acupuncturist that I saw um, for fairly regularly for a couple of years, um, but he got me to the place where my vertigo was better. I could I could actually research myself. And he had mentioned, like, oh, you know, like in between treatments, if you want to maintain this, it would be a really great idea to uh, consider um, qigong. You know, I remember really early on trying to do. Um, I don't remember if it was awakening vitality or lift chi up or you down, but trying to stand there with my eyes closed. And I could not do it, right? I mean, I would just start wobbling and falling over. And um, by, I don't know, a few months or maybe several months, I was able to do it with my eyes closed. And I could tell that my, my equilibrium overall was so much better. Qigong gave her something that she could do that she knew helped. And 
that, that was delivering real results. She posted a picture on her uh, personal Facebook um, site this summer and she was out rafting with her family in the wilds of Bend, Oregon. And you know, Cynthia has an adventurer's heart. She's a traveler. She, you know, she took the path less traveled before she got sick. And I know that she felt like she was, you know, never going to get that life back again. So it was so wonderful to see her, you know, going on, you know, not only a, a little trip, but a real outdoor adventure again. And, you know, to know all that it took to come to that point, just, it, it filled me with elation. I was so excited for her. I began actually practicing two to three hours a day. And um, it really became the foundation of my healing. And then I had this internal resilience that I had never had before. Initially, when I was practicing Qigong, it was effective, but I was, I was in a very transactional mindset. You know, I will practice in order to get, you know, better balance. I will practice to get more energy. And um, somehow when I learned, and you know, that was the only way I could do it, it how I learned to just connect to this source energy that Ming Tong is always talking about, that healing became a side effect. It just happened. You know, I wasn't trying to do it. The longer I live, the more I think that life is actually like Star Wars. I mean, in the sense that there is this force out there that we can tap into ourselves that's available to us. And then to kind of realize I'm, I'm actually married to a Jedi, you know, who's able to kind of connect in deeply because these things were helping you materially, like in really mm -hmm. meaningful ways that, um, you know, medicines and supplements were, were not. There was um, a real recognition of the, the power uh, that's there and available uh, mm -hmm. to us. What I have realized is um, how you know, both as a patient now and as a doctor, how this, the hardest step in healing is also the simplest. It's believing that it's possible. And just how, how strongly beliefs can trap us or free us. And, you know, and I realize that this has been the theme for my entire life, right? From the time I was young, trying to make sense of what is true and not true. And, heaven and hell and all these dualities and really how just everything comes together as one um, in, the, in the Qigong principles. And that one is in our bodies. <laughs>